do, I quickly want to talk a little bit, little bit about Cinema is Coming Home. Now, Sony understands the intense demand from filmmakers and creators, but also you as our customers. And this year, we're delivering cinema directly to your home through Cinema is Coming Home. And how we're doing that? Well, we're going to get into some of the bells and whistles, but realistically, not everybody has the perfect viewing environment. We don't necessarily paint our walls the perfect shade to give better contrast for the picture or have our rooms acoustically treated. That's just the realistic uh, way that most people watch their TV. So in order for us to deliver the best cinematic experience for everyone we can, we have our brand new lineup. So we're going to be answering some questions. Hopefully you got a chance to check out the video earlier today, but uh, we're going to answer some questions today and it'll be a lot. So get excited, throw those comments and questions in there and let's get started. That happens. That happens really fast. <laughs> <laughs> really <happens> fast. <laughs> all the time. So again, I want to thank everybody for being here. And just to quickly kind of set the table, if you will. Oh, oh, uh, oh I see wow. there. Yeah. I didn't yeah, intend for that. Good. Legit. Yeah. But uh, my name is Derek. I'm with Sony. We have, of course, Larry. Special guest, Mr. Thanks Brian for having Tom. Me. Thanks for having me in the, in the living room. Yes. Oh, right <laughs> Glad to have you here. And of course, Mr. Rob Brennan, the resident hey Sony expert of all things. That's why we'll be able to answer a lot of these questions. So um, again, make sure you throw in your questions into the comments. I do want to say hmm. we may not be able to answer every single question because of the volume of questions. And also there are some things that we cannot say. But feel free to throw it in there anyway. We'll do our best to answer what we can. Uh, we're going to test the limits today. You, yeah. We can give away the Sony secret sauce because it's it's for us. The way right. you said that made me scared for you for a second. You're like, there okay. are things we cannot say. That's right. Oh, they well, are well, listening. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. I, I hope they are, actually. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but to kind of get things going, um, Ryan, yes. as our special guest, yeah, I know. So so you're not, you're not, we are Sony. You're just Okay, what are you doing? Are you doing? Why are you now? Yeah. Jets and sharks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know you got a chance to actually take a look yeah. at a lot of the stuff, and I wanted to, I know I still haven't heard yet your initial impressions of a lot of stuff because I wanted to save it for this. Yeah. And what, what, is, what is some of those things that really kind of stuck out to you with what we're doing different this year? Well, the big thing that people at home, you know, I was able to go on Sony Pictures a lot. You had us and some other um, tech media and press really see the whole pipeline of how Sony as a studio creates the content from shooting to sound production to sound design. So, you know, that gives you a lot of insight. And as someone who's a junkie and a nerd about this stuff, you know, when you when you get to sit down with one of the, you know, legendary Foley artists of all time that makes mm. the sound effects on the spot, it definitely hits different, right? right. So mm -hmm. it was for you to open up the doors of Sony Pictures and let us experience that, then that informed us about how important Creators Intent was, right? You get Joseph Kaczynski, Claudio Miranda, two, you know, le legendary filmmakers mm -hmm. to talk about how they how important it is for them to, yeah, we've, we've known that we see everything how they want it in a movie theater, but now to take it all the way to the home level right. that's important too and you know as a content creator i care about people seeing what i made the way that i intend it to be seen right, so right. it worked across a lot of levels and i was just impressed with seeing all that behind the scenes and then how it's translated into the new 2024 lineup so that was that was awesome yeah and i think the reason we wanted to show that was there there's so many aspects of of film creation or even yourself as a content creator there's a lot of a story that goes into the colors you choose the contrast mm -hmm. the lighting mm -hmm. make things more dynamic mm -hmm. and we want people to experience it in the home yeah right. but as, as i mentioned earlier not everybody has the space to do that so you need the technology that can sort of adapt mm -hmm. to that space to deliver right. that so no absolutely yeah and i know that in in you all we we know that you all are filling up uh, tons of questions so there's just some things that we need to talk about first. There's just a lot of <laughs> really cool experiences, honestly, at this table that we want to share before we dive into those. Mm -hmm. And you teed it up nicely. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't try to. I didn't. Even, <laughs> I'm, I'm just here for the ride, baby. Well, it's, it's just because of this <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah no. But Rob, 
you and I had a very speaking of the LA event at mm. Sony Pictures. We, you and I had a, I think, just for me, a very memorable experience. We, we got a chance to <laughs> no that one. Oh, no, continue. <laughs> I mean that too, but you know, yeah. <laughs> but we got a chance to really spend some time with the very creators, right? Um, the the big picture and and, and TV. Uh, show creators and we have to ask them some questions and I know I have my personal takeaways but before that I wanted to just see if you could share your experience and some of the first person uh, feedback that you heard from the two gentlemen you got to spend time sure. with. Sure yeah you know um, it was a fantastic opportunity I had a chance to uh, uh, to have a conversation with Joseph Kaczynski and Claudia Miranda so Joseph is the uh, director most recently of Top Gun Maverick and uh, Claudia Miranda is the director for cinematography they've worked together on six films mm -hmm. Uh, they're working on their seventh film right now. I don't think the name is final yet. Um, but we had an opportunity to, to sit down and chat, and I had the opportunity to demonstrate our new, our new products for them. And one of the couple interesting things that came out of that conversation, one is that when I showed them the new professional mastering monitor, which is the BBM HX3110, and we'll talk why that matters to consumer mm -hmm. products in a little bit, but when I had an opportunity to show them essentially a new tool that was available to filmmakers to significantly improve their HDR kind of storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, their immediate reaction was, uh, they were talking between themselves, um, and Joseph told Claudio, do you think we should go back and remaster Top Gun Maverick <laughs> to you know, make the effects more realistic? Wow. Uh, and of course, that's just uh, um, a real treat to be able to, 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 to um, have that, that natural reaction when they yes. first saw. Uh, you know that. And then when I was doing kind of a panel interview uh, with them in front of all the media, and you know, Brian was there, we were talking about it. Um, I just thought it was so fantastic. And even the soundbar product manager came to me afterwards because I was asking them about creative intent and how it was delivered. And then unprompted, you know, uh, Joseph just blurts out, have you guys all heard the, the Bravi Theater 9 bar? It's amazing. <laughs> right. It's so awesome. But I, right. I told them I want to get one, you know, for my, uh, you know, for my studio trailer. Um, so it was a real treat to be able to sit down with, uh, with those two gentlemen um, because, uh, Brian, you brought up a really good point. For years, uh, we've talked about creative intent. And unfortunately, you usually have had to listen to me say that. Hmm. And so I apologize. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, it was a real treat to be able to talk to creators and filmmakers mm -hmm. and have them explain what creative intent is, why it's important, what goes into their films. Uh, and then we can talk about how we recreate that experience in the living room. Right. Yeah. That's very interesting. And, and for me, having just it was on my bucket list and I shared this uh, with the group there to be able to watch an episode of The Boys with the producing director of The Boys. That was awesome. Oh, man. Mm. What mm. did he say when you gave him the screenplay you wrote? Yeah. Well, <laughs> he, the next thing he did that's is he turned wrong. to someone that's and said, Where, yeah, where's the recycling? <laughs> bin? Because that's literally what happened. Right. But what he, he said something very, very sim, you know, sim, uh, similar to what you said. It, it wasn't intentional. It was very just a natural reaction. We mm -hmm. finished watching. For those that haven't seen it, it was episode three, season one, right? I'm sorry, episode one, season three. Mm -hmm. And this was five minutes into it. And he kind of rocked back in his chair. And he said, usually when we master this content, it's the last time we'll ever see it look this good. Mm -hmm. We hand it off and it's like, it's out of our hands. And then he paused for a moment and he goes, this is the absolute best I've ever seen this mm. since mastering it. Mm. Mm. And I'm not sure if everyone in the room kind of leaned into that, but I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an emotional moment. Not, yeah. not you, again, just from the standpoint of we're so committed to delivering that cinematic experience in the living room. And to have him sit next to me and make that statement, it was like, mm. Heck yeah. Yeah, and I never thought yeah. about it so so directly of that they're they are sort of at the like, oh here's here's my baby. Like I mm -hmm. hope it yeah. I hope it is flourishing out there. But realistically, how it's you know, compressed and, and right. uncompressed and put on different devices and all these different things, it may not be really what it was to carry the same weight of the storyline and right. stuff yeah. like that. And, and I don't want to leave out the element because obvious obviously uh, viewing it on the Bravia nine was one big part of it but he did get a chance to see it utilizing prime video calibrated mode. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the boys is on prime video mm -hmm. as that application, that unique relationship exclusive to Sony allowed mm -hmm. that content to be able to be delivered 
in that creator's intent. So that, mm -hmm. that was kind of, I don't, I don't want to miss that point, right. yeah. you know, as well. So now while we're talking a little bit about the, the HX 3110, you had a chance to see that with some of these TVs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for people that aren't familiar and if Rob can jump in here, if I'm not as eloquent as you talking about, but you know, this is a calibration monitor that is used by the industry, by these filmmakers to calibrate and color, cor you know, color correct and give those movies how they, how the director, how the colors wants to, you know, show us those images. So the thing about this display is that I've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. You know, as someone who has always followed the TV um, space as a consumer, we're not privy to really being exposed to the tools that uh, cinematographers and colors use. Right. So when you see this image on this, uh, the on the 3110, you're, you're blown away by the high dynamic range, which, you know, when you watch a lot of TVs, it, everything pops. It's hard, you know, we're talking about this generically, but the colors pop. There's details in clouds that you just never see. Uh, the way that sunlight, uh, the eye, I kind of call it like the eye of the sun is intense, whereas normally on our TVs at home, it's just kind of this, this splotchy big patch. Mm -hmm. So when you see that that's the original starting point of what they want to deliver to us, and then we get to know that that's the technology that is basically, you know, along the way translated to the television sets that we see, that's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the fidelity, the the way it popped. I'm a junkie. I'm the guy who buys Blu-ray discs still. Mm. I want the best image. I want the best audio fidelity. All that. Yeah. So that matters to me. And that was that was a treat to see that. Right. right. Mm -hmm. As a geek about this stuff, loved it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was such a cool thing to see. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it, it's interesting. So you talked about Blu-ray, and I know we have a couple of questions we're going to yep. dive into. Mm -hmm. But one of the big things with respect to Blu-ray Blu is the preservation of audio quality mm -hmm. and so i know we're talking a lot about tv and display and things of that nature but this cinematic experience is absolutely two parts two it's dude that's you can't have pb without jelly and we're not adding chips to that sandwich you can add potato chips not to a pb and j wow no never had a peanut butter cheese and pickle sandwich <laughs> No, I, that's right. jam. I knew this jam. was going to go yeah, off. Why did you say <laughs> jam on purpose there? <laughs> no jam. Uh, yeah. Peanut cheese and pickles. All right, wow. continue. But with that being said, though, this so we're we're making strides and making statements that I honestly no one else can do. We're delivering uh, and focused on creators' intent on both the visual and also the audio right. side, mm -hmm. right? Because we have that experience, and and I know you, Brian, had a chance to spend some time with some of the audio products as well. So before I allow you to nerd out and talk about why <laughs> Brian feels the way he feels about it, um, I saw you spend a significant amount of time in there. Tell me a little bit about that experience and in, in, of the products that, that stood out to you. So, you know, I think what stood out to me a lot just about the event in general is just this whole idea of, you know, I'm here because, you know, as a, someone who loves tech, mm -hmm. like, let's be honest, when, when you guys are excelling at a, at, a, at a high, high level and doing things that other companies aren't doing and every company is doing great things, but there's certain things specifically like with the audio, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's back there experiencing the theater quad system, mm -hmm. um, how modular it is for speaker units mm -hmm. that you could put around your room, pair it with the TV, pair it with a, sound, a subwoofer. Um, I've never heard home theater that good in that portable compact design, right? Sure. You can buy, uh, the biggest, baddest $10,000 investment, right. but you, that literally matched a system that I've built for probably five years. Wow. So that's why I was blown away. I mean, we got to watch a movie and everyone that sat there didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the sound, you know, people argue when, with video, video and sound, quite honestly, they're equally as important. You have bad audio or audio that just doesn't feel right. It, it right. taints how you, uh, watch something and so uh the systems that you're delivering are mm. like mm, chef's kiss love the quad and i love the sound bar just even how it talks to the bravia tv so uh very 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 nice love That's that awesome so rob mm. Mm. theater bar eight yes bravia theater bar nine and quad theater quad tell me a little bit and we'll talk about the you that you have you this, yeah. this, <laughs> this little thing right yeah. here. All right, we'll, we'll talk it. about that in a second. From from last year to this year, because that seems to be a, a popular question, or from our previous model, our A series, which was um, highly acclaimed and just amazing. What is the significant differences between our A series sound bars and our theater bars that we've introduced? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. There are actually a, a couple of things, um, but let me kind of touch on what's most important. 
really the overall performance, right? Now, there are ways that, that we achieve that. Uh, the speaker configuration has changed, mm -hmm. so we've been able to add additional speakers to both those, both high-frequency tweeters mm -hmm. and more mid-range woofers, for example, beam tweeters, mm -hmm. again, in the Theater Bar 9. Um, but again, that's kind of, that, those are the ingredients. Mm -hmm. What really matters is the meal, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, what we did is when we engineered kind of the sound delivery, we were able to improve a couple of key important things. One, as you mentioned at the beginning, Derek, um, when cinema is coming home, the idea is not that you, the customer, needs to go turn your living room into a theater room, right? That's our responsibility as a technology company is to develop uh, uh, ways that we can transform your space mm. into that cinematic experience by adjusting the visuals and the audio. And so those are the key upgrades. For example, with 360 spatial sound mapping or 360 SSM, um, in our sound bars, what that basically does is it allows us to correct for things happening in the room. It allows us to correct for speaker position, for listener position, and also generate additional phantom speakers to create a more immersive effect. Now, last year, in order to activate 360 spatial sound mapping, you needed the bar, and then you would add on wireless rear speakers. And we had two different... Uh, uh, designs and styles mm -hmm. and performance levels you could choose from. But you needed the bar and the rears. We updated the bars now so that they can perform the 360 SSM function within the bar itself. Mm -hmm. Wow! You can still add wireless rears, which just adds more speakers to the mix right. for you know a, an even more impressive experience. But 360 SSM now functions out of the box. And I think that's one of the, the real significant key upgrades. Yeah. The other one is we improved the vocal clarity and kind of the, the timber matching between uh, the soundbar and the television for mm. acoustic center sync. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pair your Bravia theater product with your Bravia television, you're not replacing the TV speakers with a soundbar, which mm -hmm. just means you know, that's, that's always a bummer for a customer. You, you, bought, you bought this TV, it came with audio, some of your money went to the audio, and now you're not even using it. It's mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, not great. So with Acoustic Center Sync, your television speakers become the center channel. And then your sound bar or quad delivers the rest of the experience. And we've improved kind of the sound performance matching between these two devices. For me, those are the big takeaways. Yeah. And it's also smaller. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's always, always it's always a nice that's win. Key. Yeah. Do we want to tackle some questions? We do. Yes. Yeah. I see, yeah. yeah. And Great. and before we do, yes, we see a lot of the questions <laughs> in in a lot of our dialogue. We're hoping to kind of answer some of those as a blanket. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there is a lot here, and we're gonna start rolling on some of those yep. uh, and get our thoughts. But I also want to first send a shout out to our community forum members. We see many of you in there. Yes. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you guys as always yeah. uh, supporting us. And yeah, let's uh, yeah let's dive in. Yeah. So. Um, I can take the first one. Yeah, you might as well. It, yeah, because yeah. so um, the question, because well, clearly you guys can't see it, right? Is will older episodes of The Boys be compatible with Prime Video calibrated mode? Yes, and I'm so glad mm, you asked mm, this mm, question. Mm. Okay, it's a good question. Um, Prime Video calibrated mode. What makes this calibration feature on the TV so unique is that it recognizes not that you're just watching Prime Video content. It also recognizes the content you're watching. So we understand that calibration settings differ between if you're watching an episode of The Boys or if you're watching a live sports event, mm -hmm. which is a unique uh, mm -hmm. part of, of Prime Video because it offers both live sports and, mm -hmm. and movies. The TV automatically recognizes that in this calibrated mode, it makes the necessary adjustments to give you the best picture quality with respect to that. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the content, as long as it's being played on the native Prime Video app built in to one of our new Bravia televisions. So yeah, it's a very cool partnership to oh. make sure that that we're working together to deliver it yeah. as needed, which it's, is so cool. Yeah, it's so crazy. So yeah, awesome. Great question. Yep. Uh, let's see. What will the name of the next version of the X80K be? What will be the? I didn't read that right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I did yeah. okay. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. I'm proud of you. It's far away, so. even though I have glasses on. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the Bravia 3 yeah. is essentially going to fill that space, mm -hmm. um, but with 
many upgrades, which is going to be great uh, in terms of really bringing that cinematic experience home. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the one that I'm most excited about as far as the difference mm -hmm. is, I know this is going to come up, is Voice Zoom 3. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. And actually seeing the difference of being able to turn that up as well as even turn it down, which seems weird, but it works so well. But why is it different? Yeah. That's going to be the big question because we've had previous iterations of voice zoom, mm -hmm. but we have used AI to allow us to understand not only the frequency range, but what is a voice within certain frequencies mm -hmm. and s extract that. Where in mm -hmm. previous versions, uh, voice zoom two, for example, would enhance the frequency range of voices. But mm -hmm. sometimes you have other things that kind of swim in there too and kind of oh, yeah. you know get in the way oh yeah but now yeah it's it's huge it's so easy to access and you can have multiple levels oh, yeah. can i, I can i jump favorite. in really oh, quickly because yeah. you know when you talked about um you know when they asked about oh what's the name the new name of the um the 80k i was like okay we didn't even talk about this but as a consumer and as a product reviewer Thank you for the new the new name lineup. <laughs> Bravia 9. I I mean I'm hearing applause from the crew here. <laughs> Bravia 9 8 7 3. It can, I thank you. Yes. You're welcome. I, I I I as as an outsider here, I hope that that uh, naming convention continues across products mm -hmm. cuz good lord. Yeah. <laughs> it was not easy to say that. None so. of that uh, XBR yeah. dash 65 XR X9. Yeah, I know exactly LJ. what you're talking about, Ram. Yeah. 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 Which, which really kind of just as a fun fact, those complicated model names, each letter has a meaning. It does. It's there's a whole like book on how to read those things. So is. Yes. it is yeah. much more pleasant. Now. Yeah. Well, acronyms. Yeah, most <laughs> most people know acronyms in any business that they work in. Um, I do need to correct myself. I got a little ahead of myself That's okay. just because I was so excited to talk about yep, Voice yep, in yep. Three. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know. The three stuck in my head. Bravia three does not support right. voice zoom three. That's clear, but that, that is on me. It's Shame. Me. I know. Shame. Bravia seven, eight Shame. and nine, you know, <laughs> Hey, you know, this, this, it, there's so much I want to talk about. There's a lot of excitement behind it. Yeah. I don't know. My brain just wanted to put three and three together. It's finally proof that Derek <laughs> doesn't know everything. I do not. Hey, this is a great moment. If there's anybody who has ever claimed that I don't know everything. That's true. It's That's me. true. But you know, within its own right, just with, Bravia 3, we know that TVs at that, well, let's first of all, I'll just talk about like Sony's philosophy as a whole. Our year over year sort of uh, concept that is that we want to deliver a better product at a similar price point mm -hmm. from a previous mm -hmm. year. That's actually not the industry trend. The industry trend is offer you a little bit less or more of the same in many instances. Mm -hmm. And so I was just thinking about Bravia 3. It is really stepping up more and more with respect to what it can do and deliver. And we know that it, its price point, obviously, will be very attractive to, to a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially if it's secondary viewing right. uh, spaces and things of that nature. But man, the tech, the innovative tech, and we're going to talk about backlight in a little bit, the innovative tech that's going into Bravia 7, Bravia 9, insane. Right. So we'll, let's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's a teaser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a well, teaser. I mean, I think, I think this is a good question mm -hmm. to kind of get into that. Okay. Right? So uh, the question is, I assume the Bravia 9 is the only one that can display 4,000 nit content correctly from the new lineup. Am I correct on that? Mm. That is a uh, that's an interesting one. I would actually see what your answer is on this. I know what oh, I want to say. Sorry, I fell asleep for a second. A <laughs> my eyes what was that? No, no, I, I saw I saw that question up there for a while. I'm like, yeah, you get into it. I know because yeah. that's, that's a good conversation to have. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm going to answer that question in two parts. I'm going to try and answer it kind of briefly but fully at the same time. Uh, the first is to understand just very quickly how kind of HDR works. Oftentimes, fairly regularly, as a matter of fact your display is gonna be asked to, to recreate a dynamic range beyond its capabilities, mm -hmm. right? So you're watching a 4,000 nit grade movie and your television uh, has a peak brightness of 800 nits or 1,000 nits or whatever, right? Less than the 4,000 that's being asked. That's where HDR tone mapping comes in. And it's basically the television through its processor deciding how it can best recreate that overall experience despite the fact that it's slightly outside its capabilities, mm -hmm. right? You run into that fairly regularly. Um, so how tone mapping works matters. How your processor handles it matters. Your understanding of what the intention behind the scene is matters. And that's really what sets kind of Sony TVs apart in general. Going to this specific question, Bravia 9 is the brightest 4K television 
uh, that Sony has ever produced. Ever. So it is the most, we'll call it competent when it comes to recreating HDR content. It will um, uh, be asked to do tone mapping the least often because it is the brightest uh, 4K television we've ever produced. We don't actually disclose the specific brightness of that television. I was going to ask you that. I'm because, like, as the outsider, uh, Rob, just answer the question. Because this is still, you know, <laughs> this is, we're still Sony, right? Uh, and so a thousand people are going to measure the performance of this TV and they're going to report it. But uh, we choose rather than to say it's a very specific level of brightness, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because tone mapping is a thing, how tone mapping operates is just as important. Mm -hmm. And so while we are proud of the brightness of the television, and mm -hmm. we, we are going to talk about that, um, it's not just a, a particular number. It's not, well, here's a TV that has 4,000 nits, and I guess this other one that does 4,000 and two nits is somehow just better. Right. Um, mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, that's not the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But it is the brightest. Uh, in terms of HDR recreation, if you're into kind of the professional monitor and you want to have in your living room, <laughs> The absolute closest reproduction to what the director, cinematographer, colorist sat down and looked at like four years ago when they were making the movie. Mm -hmm. You want that experience? You want Bravi 9? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well and kind of on that, I, I, I want to briefly talk about like the whole nits conversation. Mm -hmm. Like people kind of make it like, oh, it's the best because it's the brightest. Mm -hmm. But it's not the brightness right. it's really the color capability mm -hmm. within that hdr range as you said so having a tv that can give you and not roll off and just turn into a white non-detailed splotch mm -hmm. some of the tvs actually feel brighter because they're inaccurate because they're losing all this detail and you're losing in the sun it's just right. turning this white ball of nothing no details so yep. yeah and, and the robbie and nine like seeing that compared to the mastering monitor was like holy cow right. that is mm -hmm incredibly yeah, mind-blowing yeah yeah so for it. me the outsider you if i hold up like three fingers or four fingers you you wouldn't nod and you just smile and say thanks for coming brian uh i would acknowledge <laughs> that you appear to have all of your digits i want to know i want to know, I just know. <laughs> he's, he's, he came in it. with 10 as long as he leaves with 10 sony mm. legal is not gonna have a problem with me so that's my concern. i'll say I'll, I'll make sure when i leave I there you go yeah, yeah, <laughs> i'll hear i'll hear that's too funny um, so another question, uh, is the Bravia cam still compatible with the new Bravia TVs? The answer to that is absolutely yes, with the exception of Bravia 3. Mm. So 7, 8, and 9, it's compatible. But we often talk about just Bravia cam, but we don't really dig into all of the incredible features that it unlocks. So, of course, Google Meet, Zoom, those calls with, you know, Grandma, Grandpa, 100%, yes, you can do that. But some of the auto calibration features that um, that Bravia Cam opens up with Ambient Optimization Pro, it's insane. Mm -hmm. Like I'm 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 sort of silly with things. Sometimes I get I distracted by dangling keys and things like that. That is true. But yeah, like in the middle of a conference it's like a call. cat. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> so I it's just, honestly, so I turned on Ambient Optimization Pro on my TV at home, and I just walked around my room because again, mm. I'm, I'm all about before I talk about something, I need to A, make sure that there's some evidence that it actually works and I'm just curious what happens, right? I'm like, why do I need a camera? Anyway, so as I'm walking around the room, I'm watching the green dot like move me around and then you have the, the meters, right? So I'm watching as I'm approaching closer to the TV, brightness is reducing as I'm backing up, brightness goes up, it's all these other changes that are happening mm. and I know that mm. it also impacts audio. So when you think about, and Derek, you talked about that personal experience. You mm -hmm. talked about 360 SSM, that personalized experience, that customized experience. With Bravia Cam, that's another little nugget mm -hmm. that contributes to that unique, specialized mm -hmm. experience. Because what our commitment or what we're trying to do is have the TV and our home theater products are you know, sort of be that calibrator that goes into your house right. and sets things up acoustically and things like that. It's, it's well, and it's I think, I think it's even, and I'll be quick on this because we have so many other questions to get mm -hmm. into, but um, the key is really kind of this and Derek touched on at the very beginning. If you paint your room black hmm. and you turn mm -hmm. off all the lights, and you close all the doors, having a pristine picture is not easy, but it's certainly easier. Um, I will point out that Sony for several years in a row uh, mm -hmm. has I've been crowned king of television, and that's after you know Sony and, and TVs from other manufacturers are calibrated and they're in perfect condition. So just because your room is perfect doesn't mean it's child's play to get a perfect image, but it's certainly easier mm -hmm. uh, to do it in that environment. And the same thing acoustically, right? If you have an acoustically sound environment, great. 
but that's not where we live. Hmm. And so the next level becomes, well, now we need to adjust for your environment. Um, your acoustic performance in your living room is terrible, so let's fix that. Your speakers aren't in the right location because you know you have furniture there, so let's fix that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know your your lights are on and your walls are pink, so let's adjust the picture <laughs> to account for that. But then Bravia Cam brings the next level. Mm-hmm. Well, what are you, the person who paid for the television and soundbar, doing? Mm-hmm. Are you are you folding laundry and sitting three feet to the left of the perfect se- seating position? Mm-hmm. Let's adjust the picture and sound for what you're doing. Right. So we're trying to do all of those various levels to deliver a consistent performance mm-hmm. uh, in your space. And because we intimately understand what the filmmaker's intention is, and our technology can understand your environment, and Bravia Cam knows where you're sitting we can recreate the accurate experience at home. So when we say cinema is coming home, the, that's the reason we chose that language rather than, you know, you know, good for watching movies or, you know, <laughs> Sony, the home oh, theater cool. company. It's yeah. like, <laughs> Super we're campy. not saying you have to make a theater. We will handle it. We will kind of fix it I for like you. That. Yeah. And the last thing well, I'll, I'll, I'll point, because I've said this so many times, it's not Sony pictures are coming home and it's not Sony movies mm-hmm. are coming home. We work with every studio, we understand film Mm -hmm. you understand Mm -hmm. cinema Mm -hmm. so if you like to watch movies and i know you do Mm. uh then you're gonna want to take a look at these new products also um we're at we're the tally i've been counting so far you guys have said a cinema is coming home five times oh well i get i get i get paid at seven (laughs) so So, (laughs) you know to that i say (laughs) keep tabs at home we're at five i love it there it is nice drinking all right what else we got for questions yeah we do have more yeah uh yeah so let's just take the next one on there what happened to qd oled I noticed there isn't a Bravia 10 model. Will we be seeing QD OLED as Bravia 10 this year? Mm. You know what I love mm. about this? Mm. Digging. We're, we're like <laughs> three hours into new naming convention, and it's already the it's guessing it. game of what's next. I love it. I love that. <laughs> Here these missing numbers. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yep. Um, Bravia 7.8. This is usually when I flash Don't the disclaimer. No. It's usually what happens right now. No. No. So here's the deal. If I, I, do, I actually want to take a stab at this one. Yeah, yeah, stab All right. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about QD OLED. And I did joke about this last year, uh, you know, a bit unknowingly, right? Because we talked about A95L and how incredible that TV was. Of course, it was crowned king of TVs. And everybody was painfully waking, waiting all year for this TV. And I ingest. Wow. Careful. I just jokingly in, in the YouTube comments, I said, is the A95L really a late 2023 model or an early 2024 model? I literally, I, I kind of just did not know. And there's people in the room staring at me right now. It makes me feel really uncomfortable. But anyway, <laughs> so what happens when you leave my comments unchecked. But um, the truth of the matter is that TV was so ahead of its time, so dominant. And because of its positioning, when it came out during the year, Anybody that would have bought that TV, if we just came out and announced a new one right now, how angry would you be, Mm -hmm. right? That the A95L served as a teaser. Let's consider that the preview of all the incredible things that we're just announced today. So the A95L is going to continue. And oh man, it is, it it, it is still there. I'll, I'll tell you as someone who owns the A95L. That's um, a flex. That, no, no, I'm just, so I'm just saying, you know, when I, I care about that. <laughs> and longer hair than me too, but um, <laughs> flip that thing around. But you know, I was, wor- I was actually worried. Like uh, at, at, you know, at CES, I'm like, oh man, I just invested in this TV. Don't re- like, don't release a new one yet. And in a weird way, you know, I, I, I upgrade my technology when I think it's worthwhile. I didn't want to see another one just purely because of the investment that I had made. Right. It would it wouldn't make sense. It's not about being fair. It's it is because of the level of the technology that's there. Right. Yeah. That's important to know that, you know, when I throw down for a TV like that, that's a TV that I, I'm thinking of keeping for like ten years, quite honestly. Yeah. Until you guys show me something next year, then I'm gonna get really mad. But <laughs> but no, it, you know, so I was I was okay with that. Right. But I do like I like the stab of the Bravia ten. Mm. I yeah. mean what 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 other T V product in the product line could that be for? I don't know. Not hmm. able to discuss any unannounced or use <laughs> products. <laughs> yeah. Probably X because X is like an impactful brand. Oh, thing. nice. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it yeah. could be, but you look at Sony's history. We like we like the Z or the Z. The Z or Z. That's so funny. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I know we can be here all day. I w- I, I will. I want to skip that first one. To pass that one. I I want to touch on two down if I can. Two down. Yeah. 
Hey, oh, yeah, just, that's a, yeah. Just read it. Grab okay. it. Yeah. That's just, a that's a yes no question. It's very simple. The Bravia TVs have Dolby Vision. First, before I even answer that question, the reason why that question has to be asked is because there are still televisions that don't support. Here, why don't you say that in the microphone? A very popular. <laughs> there, there's still te- there's still televisions that exist in this space that don't support this HDR format. So, in short answer, yes, it it does, and you can't be a content creating company. You can't be a company delivering the cinematic experience to home without supporting not just Dolby Vision, but what we're doing with IMAX Enhanced, mm-hmm. what we're doing with all the calibrated modes. You mm-hmm. have to. And so, yeah. Can, can we just very quickly say that we do also have the Sony Pictures Core calibrated mode, the Netflix adaptive calibrated mode, as well as the Prime calibrated mode, you yes. which, you know, that as well as HDR10, of course. Yes. So in order to stay true to what, yeah. you know, filmmakers and creators want mm-hmm. you to see, we need to be able to support that. And, and yep. not everybody agrees with that, which. In my reviews, I always call that, f- that fact out, whether it spo- supports Dolby Vision or not. It's important for me. And so yeah. it's like. I have to call that because people ask all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In every almost every review. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's a premium format, and you know, studios use that as their platform, and so being able to support it natively mm-hmm. certainly makes it easier to recreate that experience in your living room, mm-hmm. right? And so, um, and all, uh, in case it wasn't clear, that's probably a nine, seven, eight, seven, and three. Yep. We'll support Dolby mm-hmm. Vision. Yes. There are some kind of key non-negotiables that Sony has from our television lineup. Things like 4K, things like wide color gamut, things like HDR performance, mm-hmm. where it's like even though we have a foundation model or a you know a mid tier mm-hmm. or a super premium or a uber premium you know offering, <laughs> it's like you're buying a television 2024. There are certain things that you need to expect right. out of that television that we mm-hmm. um, we have to put in. So yeah, that's well said. Last uh, one. Uh, yeah, I I I want to talk about that third question. Mm. Uh, it's a, that's a good question. Uh-huh. You, you uh-huh. Go for it. All right. I'm just gonna, okay. yours. <laughs> Here's a, the question is, is Bravia 7 or X95L better? Uh, and that is a fantastic question. So first, um, as a brief reminder, last year in 2023, X95L was Sony's top of the line 4K mini LED television, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Only available in 85 inch, so somewhat kind of exclusive in terms of you've got to be looking for an 85 inch, and you know it's certainly in the premium tier. Mm-hmm. Um, Bravia 7, from a, con- a color contrast kind of backlight performance, gives you that same level. So last year's top of the line 4K mini LED television <laughs> is Sony's uh, in 2024, it is our third string television, <laughs> 987. So I love when I'm able to point to specific examples of technology mm-hmm. pushing down. Mm-hmm. So from a contrast performance, from a color reproduction performance, um, they're, they're basically uh, uh, similar there. Mm-hmm. Bravia 7 is the better television because it also has things like Voice Zoom 3. Mm-hmm. It has the improved acoustic center sync, mm-hmm. right? It has the other upgrades that we've made, and we haven't gotten into all of them yet, mm-hmm. but the other upgrades that we're offering in 2024. So from a foundation picture perspective, yeah. I would put them on the same level. When you look at the overall package of everything the TV can do, Bravia 7 is going to sit above it. Um, yeah. And I, I'm thrilled now this year, Basically, you can get that level of television in lots of different sizes and more accessible, at yes. least in North America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you were in uh, other countries, we, we had different sizes you could purchase. So I'm, I'm going to tell you what the, here's this. This will be the big debate this year. And maybe I'll ask you. Oh, man. Okay. Put me on the spot. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> this will be the big debate. Debate. Because we know there's, there's that camp, right? There's that very strong, I saw comments, very strong OLED camp. Oh, I know where you're going here. Okay. Is it 65 inch Bravia 8? Or is it 75 inch Bravia 7? Well, to me, that just depends on your living space, okay, right? Because I, I look at these TVs for the longest time, longest time, I've been OLED, OLED, OLED. Like we've been almost pound, that's almost been ingrained into our head. Uh-huh. But now as the TV markets have matured, mini LED technology has stepped up. These are more like tools, so it depends really on your conditions. You know, how far or how big is your living room? Right. Well, that's going to immediately determine what size you want to go with and then also lighting conditions in your home Mm -hmm. look oled tends to excel in a more perfect dark environment where you can black out everything Mm -hmm. where when you have natural sunlight coming in you got to go mini led to compete with that in general Mm -hmm. so to me it comes down to your 
it's very personal. Yeah. You know what you what decision you make. Yeah. Hence why you guys are all and many manufacturers are making TVs at different tiers and different technologies. It's just up for someone like me to explain that to people. Like, what's the difference in OLED, QD OLED, WRGB OLED, yeah. Mini LED, LCD? So yeah, yeah. That, I guess that's my job. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. but yeah, it's no, a, yeah, there are tools, and I, I would I would say in my mama's house. She's getting the 75 because she has a bright area. But, yeah, hmm, yeah I, 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 I'd, I'd push her that way. Just also. I get I'd, it. I'd push yeah. her that way. 100%. I was just curious. But I'm an OLED guy, so me yeah. saying that, I'm like, yeah, I'd push mama that way. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That, that's balanced, and that works. Yeah. All right. Last one for me. Okay. Um, which theater bar is better, bar nine or quad? I think it's a perfect segue from that Ooh. conversation. Okay. Yes. Or which one is the flagship? Yeah. This is the thing. We are offering two flagship home theater products. Both the Theater Bar 9 and the Theater Quad are both flagship models. The beautiful thing about this is, to your point, lifestyle conditions, what is your, your home situation? There's a group of us that want a more traditional form factor in a sound bar, front of the room, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, and you should not sacrifice features or sound quality based upon construct or, or design. Mm -hmm. The Theater Quad, it's sort of designed forward. It's very aesthetically pr pleasing in my household. It would be spousal approved, mm -hmm. right? That's how it works for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you get it, right? <laughs> so, but that, that, I think it's awesome that we're not saying that you have to choose this one form factor if you want to get the absolute best sound quality. Mm -hmm. You can pick and choose what fits you the best. Right. Yeah. I, I would add one caveat, okay. and only a minor one, mm -hmm. uh, in that it's important to get good essentially stereo imaging for dialogue and for center channel, right? You want your eyes and your ears to agree that where you should pay attention. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a uh, Sony uh, Bravia television this year, so the Bravia 9, 8, or 7, mm -hmm. or from last year you have um, a t television that's compatible with Acoustic Center Sync, then I would say Quad can give you that really clean center channel. Mm -hmm. If you're pairing it with a television that doesn't do acoustic center sync, then you just have to know that the speakers have to be placed in a position that gives you very good center channel repro mm -hmm. reproduction, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's just easier to get that if you have acoustic center sync, um, then you're, you're, you get a better experience. So I would say if you um, are... are not pairing it with the Sony television, then I would generally lean someone to bar nine a little bit more mm -hmm. because it's traditional. The center is going to, unless you're a little nutty, uh, you're going to put your sound bar directly <laughs> in your TV, right? So the center <laughs> channel is associated with the television. That's the only caveat that I would say. Fair. Um, yeah. But if it's a Sony television and you're pairing it to either one of those products, then I would, I would, uh, your Larry's absolutely spot on. What, what um, would be a nutty sound bar position to you? Uh, <laughs> I'm just I, curious. I, I did ask an engineer once if it was possible to strip <laughs> out the HDMI, put in speaker terminals, and turn uh, all my sound bars into towers. Uh, wow. He That's... hasn't spoken to me since. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Wow. I get it. That was like, that's a hundred channel setup. This is thirteen channels <laughs> that's per just speaker. Nutty, Rob. <laughs> yeah, you, you ask. I, I'm curious. You ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what else we have? Yeah, so uh, also, I want to thank, again, really quick, I want to thank you guys for being here, which is great. But more importantly, all of you being here, uh, joining us as well. And again, we will get through as many questions as we can, but there is a lot coming through, and uh, we'll do our best here. But yeah, keep them coming. Um, but yeah, there was one that I want to talk to you really quickly. What are the advantages of using the Broby Theater U? Ooh, there we and, go. Right, that's that's a... Uh, he's, wearing, he's wearing it well, right you, now. He's wearing did it. You go through, you went through yeah. You did, oh, yeah. you did the Hello? demo. So, so before I... <laughs> <laughs> Before I kind of say my my thoughts on it, but what was your impression from having gone through the demo? So I, again, when we talk about model numbers, I don't remember what the original one was called because a lot of letters and numbers. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I did use that first one, and so I had, I had a point of reference to go off mm. of. And so when I put these on, obviously they're a lot lighter. But and then the improvements over the years and just sound technology, mm -hmm. they sound incredible. And you you can't really feel them. Like I always thought it was a fascinating device. And now that um, you're maybe it's because I'm older, but you're in environments where you kind of have to pay attention to the environment around you mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. You can't always close off the world because someone might not like that at home. Mm. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. But uh, <laughs> parents mm, too yep. maybe. But um, you know, so having the freedom to be able to still feel. Um, 
in your own almost like cone of sound, mm -hmm. not cone of silence, mm -hmm. and then still being able to, um, you know, react to maybe you have kids around the place or pets or mm -hmm. you know, your spouse. That that's where that thing excels without disrupting the entire home environment and blasting right. the yeah. theater system that I have at home. Right. I, I you know I think you you said it absolutely perfectly. Uh, I was. Uh, they explained it to me. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I get it. And mm -hmm. then I put it on, and I'm sitting mm -hmm. there, and I'm, we were playing, you know, we're playing some video games, and mm -hmm. we're experiencing that. And I'm having a conversation whilst knowing where the zombies are and spinning <laughs> and having no issue. Mm -hmm. um, and it really kind of came, you know, kind of fruition there. Uh, this is. This is one of the products I'm most excited about this year. Mm -hmm. I think it is so fun. Yeah, you know the TVs are amazing. They're like they're they're what they're like technical marvels, and the right. sound bars are astonishing. Mm -hmm. This <laughs> is just so much fun to use. It is right. Um, I I want to spray paint it like gold and make it like all blingy. And like, I like how you're still holding it like have. a phone, but it's not. <laughs> What's up? Um, but yeah, I I absolutely adore this product. I, yeah. I'm I'm so thrilled that we have something like this in the lineup. You know, and Rob, in, in on the list of things where we listen, we listen to comments and recommendations of product that over NS7 delivers on a big one. Because with NS7, it was can you pair two of these together mm -hmm. at the same mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. That was a that was a big question. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the theater, you can deliver that experience where two people, I don't, because that's my experience at home right now. My, we finally get my daughter to sleep and my wife and I want to watch TV and I'm reading subtitles instead of listening yeah, to yeah, it, which yeah. is a trip. So having both of us be able to share in that experience or not one person with one earbud and the other with the other. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sharing, I'm oversharing now. But to, ha to be able to have that audio cinematic experience, that, that three-dimensional space of audio shared between mm -hmm. two people, you know, watching content, I think is a big win for so many households mm -hmm. that that is going to be a favorite of a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, even like people sleeping at different hours yes. and you can't, you know, my lady works at like 2, 4 a.m. sometimes and like mm -hmm. I can't blast my theater system when it's the only time I can watch a streaming show. So mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. comes in clutch for things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, in my opinion, it, it is a very nice upgrade from the NS7 too. The the sound quality, the feel, the flexibility of it, the ability to pair a second one is is huge. So yeah, it's it's when, it's when did awesome. the NS7 come out roughly? I'm not trying to put you all on the spot, but two years, May, maybe not quite two years. Almost yeah, year and a half. Yes, yeah, I had the NB10 before that. I think is what I just oh, remember yeah, what the yeah, very yeah. very Throwback. the very very first time they released a product like that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it felt like maybe it was like four or five years ago, and I. Just, yeah, there, there, there have been various variations, but for the NS7, I'm fairly sure it was two years. Yeah. Uh, 2022 close. product cycle, I believe. I think is what it was. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, I think that the, you know, for someone looking for that kind of experience, and for me, I also think about this like if you're buying a, like a 43 inch television, mm -hmm. um, the sound bar, <laughs> probably a <laughs> theater nine is like twice that wide. Uh, so if you have a smaller television, this could become like, yeah. mm -hmm. this is like the official, yeah. you know, uh, uh, audio for that television mm -hmm. or it becomes an alternative secondary, you know, accessory for everything else. Yep. So yeah. if, if you have an opportunity, um, at your favorite retailer or, or however, um, you get a chance to listen to these. I, I, I hope you, you do because it's, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I, it brings some of that sense of like kind of joy right. back to listening and watching. Right. Mm -hmm more than sometimes the more kind of just critical kind of um, surgical way that sometimes we there's a charm to it there's a charm there, yeah, to it it, it yeah. really is it, really it is cool. stood out to me at the event I was like oh that might be my favorite product of the device, of, of, of the event because just so it has yeah. that charm to it yeah that's good that's well said actually yep so there's uh, I'll just jump right in here there's no, another question someone just asked uh, uh, about using the theater you and the television at the same time absolutely mm -hmm. so um, if someone is hard of hearing my I, the example I give is my dad, who is like, I don't know, 100 and 150. I have no idea. Congrats to him. I, don't, I can't do math. That's impressive. He was born the same year as Elvis, so that's a long time ago. Uh, I think 1935, 37. Anyway, um, he, he can't hear anything. Uh, so if he comes over, we want to watch TV, he can put this on and he can crank the volume. Mm -hmm. And for those of us sitting, you know, five, six you know, feet away, we'll barely be able mm -hmm. to hear what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And then we can play the television mm -hmm. or the TV with quad or the TV with bar nine or mm -hmm. whatever combination. Mm -hmm. We can have that at a different volume level. Yep. Or if you're pairing two of these, like, like you mentioned, Derek, if you pair two of these to a television, each one has independent volume control. Different. Yep. Um, and then of course, lastly, the TV can be muted and mm -hmm. then you can just have this work. Yes. So it's a very flexible platform. Yep. 
Absolutely. Great. All set. Yep. Cool. I'd like to see. Mm, that's a question. Ooh. Okay. You want that one? <laughs> Oh, sure. I mean, sure. Uh, <laughs> so the, it should be it. So this is like but... Jeopardy. Yes. Uh, no. And yeah. Now the, I'll, I'll tell you what the yeah. question was. Yeah. So I was say, what is... <laughs> yeah the, the, the question is, can you pair uh, wireless rear speakers with quad? Uh, so no. Quad comes is four uh, speaker enclosures, mm -hmm. and then each enclosure has four drivers, a mm -hmm. sub, a mid, a tweeter, and then your Dolby Atmos enabled. And they are designed in a way that you place two in front of you and two behind you. Mm -hmm. They're... Okay. Specific location isn't as important because they have microphones mm -hmm. and they will listen to each other and calibrate. So you put them where they look good and where they mm -hmm. fit and they adjust. But you already have physical speakers in front and, and behind. So so, fo so follow up to that. I'm yeah. sorry, Rob. So follow up to that is can you connect two SW5 subwoofers to it? We know that it, it's compatible with SW3 and SW5. Can you connect two subwoofers to the... The theater quad. So we're just going on no train today, aren't we? All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> so uh, no, for the sound bars and for quad, uh, it's a single subwoofer, and there are two okay. different uh, performance mm -hmm. levels you can choose from SW5 and SW3, mm -hmm. but you can pair one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, for quad, you can pair, again, the sub, and for the bars, you can choose between two different sets of rears, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, RS5s and the RS3s, RS3 yes. yeah, um, and you can have <laughs> I either I love watching this. Yeah, I love set, watching you sweat, set, boy. <laughs> I think it, they, they could just be called, like, rear twos. Yes. Yeah, rear product three. planning, can we just call them rear twos and rear threes? It's coming. Noted. It's coming, <laughs> Noted, man. It's coming. Um, Noted. Uh, but you can pair with the, with the bar. You can have rears mm -hmm. and or a sub. For quad, you yeah. can add a sub. Yeah, and that's the system. I, so, in in on that, I think it's there's I always say like there's levels to this. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, <laughs> there's absolutely levels, and and just starting with HTA9 last year to where we are now with Theater Quad, this was a revolutionary bridge product that minimized the gap between a traditional soundbar and an AVR channel-based mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what it represented. When I say that there's levels to this, if you feel that you have the need for a two subwoofer application to wireless subs, we have that option as well, mm -hmm. right? You can move up to an AN1000 receiver or one of our ES receivers, whatever the case may be. But again, if you just look at just the entire line, everything that we've introduced today with, with uh, Bravia Theater mm -hmm. and all of those other elements together, we actually have a product that can fit into each specific individual's lifestyle and home. Yeah, I think that's, that's what's cool. That's a good point too, that, that sometimes, you know, trying to keep up with technology is impossible. Mm -hmm. It is not going to happen. It changes every year and everybody's like, well, I didn't have this last year. Well, you're going to say the same thing the next year, but having something like the rears as well as the subwoofers, mm -hmm. if you wanted to upgrade from an A5000 into a Bravia theater. That's me for a long time in, in many numerous occasions, you know, which one's better, which one's better. I'm not interested in making a better kind mm -hmm. of television because I don't know for you what your, mm -hmm. partic your particular well, needs so. are, yeah. what better might mean. Yeah. For you, maybe the most important thing is the, the weight of a television because your walls are made of like lasagna noodles. Um, and that's so- a, That's a unique house. That yeah, is very, very unique, unique house. Delicious, I love <laughs> yeah. lasagna, right? I'm a pasta unique guy. Unique situation. Clearly. Um, <laughs> So again, better for me is, is, is not where I want to focus. And the reason I, I point that out is this. There are certainly technologies that exist out in the marketplace outside of Sony that are awesome, mm -hmm. right? No, so what is it that Sony's trying to do? We're now up to eight now. C cinema is coming home. Is are we at what, eight? Are we eight? If, I, I feel like we're at six. Oh, I think we're at six. six. Okay, yeah, we'll we get, haven't said it in a while we since I pointed it out. We'll get so to six. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to that thing, I'm not going to cheat okay, and say okay. it again right now. Uh, but when it comes to that kind of experience, that is what, as Larry said, we are laser focused on. Mm -hmm. So if that's the kind of experience you're interested in, I would tell you that, yes, Sony is giving you uh, the better option in that um, regard. If you had different kind of needs, then we could talk about mm -hmm. um, uh, what those needs are and whether Sony is still the best for that need too. Mm -hmm. In this case, if you're talking about watching movies, you're talking about having that kind of experience at home, the visual spectacle, the way that the audio completely transports you from your living room with screaming kids onto a desert planet full of large worms. Um, <laughs> that's what we are going to be doing mm -hmm. for you. 
Uh, and um, I'm thrilled to be able to, to work at that and be able to help deliver that kind of That's experience. Awesome. Even as someone who's like a content creator who reviews a lot of different TVs and manufacturers, look, I don't own one single specific brand. Mm -hmm. I actually own different brands, even recommendations that I give to my family or my friends. It's different depending on, like we talked about, a living room environment and also mm -hmm. price. Right, so that's all these things are going to factor in. Whenever someone sells me, even on, in any tech, what's the best one? My first thing is like, what do you want to do with it, mm -hmm. and what's your budget? Mm -hmm. right. And that will lead you down a path of wherever that takes you. So, of course, yeah, if you can always get the biggest and the best every year, which is not me, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some people out like that, and it makes it easy for them. But um, a lot of us have to make different decisions um, along right. the way. So, like I said, these are all tools depending on what fits for you. Yep. yep. And they didn't tell me to say that. I'm actually saying that under my own volition. Good job. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> looks like he's getting a new TV this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Rob. You said that was seven. Okay. okay. Yeah. There it is. There you go. All right. I know we're getting close on time, so we need to pull a couple of uh, key questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. I don't want to say rapid fire, but maybe we can kind of. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, get through let's them. do that. Yeah. Kind of quick. Let's see. Uh, is the Bravia Quad a replacement for the HTA9? Uh, Yes, it is a replacement. Uh, we're not going to get into model numbers, but the actual model number is HTA9 Mark II. Yes. So for those that <laughs> didn't know, but yes, it is replacing that. Uh, what's the difference? So um, uh, three, sorry, two of the three speaker elements in each one, no, three of the four. Try, yeah, three of the four speaker elements inside of the quad are newly innovated and newly designed specifically to be able to give you this exceptional sound performance in this small cabinet. So it is much smaller and thinner. That's uh, one point. So all collectively total, there's 16 speaker elements that deliver this, uh, this incredible sound quality. The second thing is the stands. And I know we're showing it on screen right now. So again, it's very design forward. So those stands are multifunction stands. They have the ability to traditionally be, be placed on a piece of furniture as they are or those stands double as wall mounting mm -hmm. hardware to be able to wall mount the quad. Mm -hmm. um, that is a part of us, this, this thoughtful execution of a very design forward product. So if, if I could say those are, I own the HTA9 and I've, clearly I tested out the theater quad. Yeah, I'm trying to see how many times I can say theater quad to get a set of those <laughs> in my house. <laughs> just, just, just saying. keep saying it. Yeah. All right, just keep saying um, it. I'll just manifest it, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. um, but there is an overall sound improvement of there. As, as Rob said, we've dialed, dialed in some things, and the impact of it uh, utilizing acoustic center sync is like, without question, just a mind. I purposefully did demos doing the movie with the large worms in the sand and paused it at like this climactic moment. And you can see everybody leaning That's forward. what he did. That's what did. you did that to us. Sure and did. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, that feeling you feel right there is the impact of audio in the yeah. home. That is why you go to the movies. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that and and this ICs. Yes. Right. <laughs> Red and blue together <laughs> is my jam. There it um, is. The, uh, <laughs> Too funny. Uh oh, that one's got my name on Let's it. Get, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's a question. Uh, uh, is uh, are many LEDs good? Um, and then the comment, I'm really surprised our flagship, as in our flagship, is not OLED. Hmm. That is an excellent question. Hmm. So hmm. be surprised. That's number <laughs> one. Uh, no, seriously, thank you for the question. Um, That's a good question. I mentioned at the very beginning when I started talking the professional mastering monitor, and Brian, you talked about it a little bit as well, the BVMHX3110, which is good, the new reference standard for Hollywood. Uh, that's made by Sony. The prior model that it's replacing the BVMHX 310 is also made by Sony, and it's been the reference standard in Hollywood for a number of years. Uh, those are LCD mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. Those are not OLED products. Mm -hmm. The HX 3110, this new 4,000 nit professional mastering mm -hmm. monitor that studios are just now getting access to, is essentially a mini LED LCD mastering monitor. And if you are looking for the most accurate picture quality. Um, this isn't a TV. This is a scientific measuring, essentially, device mm -hmm. used by filmmakers. Mm -hmm. The very best technology that, that lives in that professional space is LCD-based with dynamic bat-like control. That's what it is. 
and I know that you kind of mentioned it. Sometimes we have this kind of uh, emotional connection. Uh, OLED came on the scene and really shook up kind of the industry. Backlights and televisions were getting better. Yes, they were dynamic. We were concerned about black level performance. Mm -hmm. um, and OLED came in and, and, and really offered this, this other level mm -hmm. of kind of localized contrast. Um, but the developments on the LCD side, whether it's full array, local dimming, or mini LED, um, have not stopped. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, um, they've gotten to the point where in, in many situations, in many customers' living rooms, um, based on most content people watch, based on the, the typical kind of lighting conditions and the environmental, you will not see a significant difference between a mini LED and an OLED when it comes like things like black level mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. Where you will see a difference is in overall HDR reproduction. And because mm -hmm. Bravia 9 and even Bravia 7 are so advanced in terms of their overall dynamic range, mm -hmm. their HDR presentation mm -hmm. is stunning. Yes. And it is delivering a thing that OLED or QD OLED can't deliver in that same way. OLED and QD, and QD OLED and OLED can deliver other things in, in slightly different ways. Mm -hmm. Their off angle viewing is unparalleled. Right. That's why we still offer right. both Bravia 8, which is OLED, and A95L, which is QD OLED. They still mm -hmm. have a place mm -hmm. in Sony's strategy, Correct. in your buying decision they, mm -hmm. they they have earned a plan insider kind of perspective when hdr was first introduced studios were falling over themselves they were they were giddy they were like school children they were so excited <laughs> because sdr had been the format for so long they were thrilled to be able to shoot it up to ten thousand nits <laughs> and and bt 2020 color space and 12 bit color and and then they realized that doing that is really hard mm -hmm. <laughs> because the tools, the professional tools didn't exist. The reason why the majority of movies today are only at a thousand nits mm -hmm. of HDR is because the current professional monitor that's used, the Sony BVM 310, is a thousand nits. Right. It's not because directors prefer that. They want more. Mm -hmm. They're limited based mm -hmm. on the tools that they have. Mm -hmm. This new tool is going to unleash that potential, that the interest that's already there. And again, Robbie and I is ready to receive it. And one nerdy thing, can I jump in real quick? Nerd, one nerdy thing, please. You know, everyone has been talking about, every, the consumer has been talked about nits is brightness, but it's actually the details in the brightness mm -hmm. and that rings. That's what I saw at the event, you know, seeing the specificity of the sun, seeing details in clouds when you're like, oh, this, this and this, you're not watching a movie that's 4,000 nits the whole time. It's just hitting those mm -hmm. different benchmarks in different scenes. So it, I think there's gonna be some education that comes around, you yeah. know, details in brightness, just, oh, this is really bright. It's more to it than that. Well said. So real quick before uh, <laughs> we get in, because I know we've been talking a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, apparently we had some network issues, as I understand, and I think we're back. We're good now. Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. So okay. apologies so just be safe, for that. Start over. Yes. So start the beginning. beginning. <laughs> yeah. So th there was there was a comment. Uh, Welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Andrea. You tripped over the cable. <laughs> yeah. Andrea was asking, "Is this pre-recorded?" Nope. We nope. would have edited that out if it was pre-recorded. But no, nope, this is proof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey. That's awesome. Ah. <laughs> you would do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but again, thanks to everybody that that's here. Um, and, and also, I, I I feel weird saying this, but I know it is important. Uh, but please subscribe and like uh, as well and comment. Don't feel weird great. about that. I that's I just do. part of the job now. I know, yeah, but yeah. it's it's yeah, weird yeah. for me because it's all it's always been weird to me. It becomes like second nature. You just don't. It's just part of the job. Yeah, right? yeah because job. because it is going to be great to. <laughs> So we know that this is good for you as customers to help support you in all these different ways, uh, answer as many questions as we can. I do want to say, too, because I did see it co uh, pop up a couple times about uh, timing and price. Mm -hmm. You can go to the electronics website. Mm -hmm. and it does have some information there, and there's the notify me when it's available. So yeah. it's a good resource to check out as yep. well. All right. I'm going to rapid fire a couple of things that I think we didn't touch on that I think are important really, really fast. Okay. It'll just be a couple of seconds. What's for lunch? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't that's, know yet. That's, that's number two. <laughs> that's number two. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so question popped up earlier regarding Sony Pictures Core and Bravia Core. I know we haven't talked much mm. about mm -hmm. that, right? Um, obviously, Bravia Core was named what it was because this platform that has the largest library of IMAX enhanced content and then a lot of great content from Sony and also uh, the exclusive pure stream technology, yeah. which purists that love blu-ray if, if you do want to take advantage of a streaming platform you have that um it will now be renamed as sony pictures core 
as you will find an expansion of that platform on multiple devices. You PlayStation 5 lovers out there are already, you know, you already saw that. I want to be careful as I say this, but it will continue to be an advantage to enjoy Sony Pictures Core on a Bravia TV because you will be able to take advantage of pure stream, okay, which is the highest, highest quality you can get from streaming content. All right, so that's that. Uh, Derek, your favorite topic, Eco Dashboard 2, mm -hmm. has come up. Um, mm -hmm. Will we see, this is for anybody in the room, will we see <laughs> Eco Dashboard 2 go to some of our previous models, or will it be limited and exclusive only to the 2024 lineup? That I actually don't know. We're not able to comment on <laughs> future or unannounced <laughs> firmware. You just, you just threw that yeah. out there. Just yeah. to, um, <laughs> well, is you a know, question. Stay mm -hmm. tuned. I, I will say that we do have a tradition of always trying to deliver what we can to previous mm -hmm. models. Obviously, if there's a demand, as long as there are no hardware limitations mm -hmm. to it, we will always do that. Yes, so. and I'm glad that you said that to the hardware limitation because we know that it can be very frustrating to purchase something next year, something huge comes out that's just like, oh man, I even could have waited, whatever. And hopefully they'll bring that feature to my old TV. Yep. Sometimes it's just not possible due yep. to hardware limitations, but I can tell you that it is something that Sony is aware of and we'll try to do our best to offer it where it is possible. Yep. Sounds good. All right, I know we are at a point where we want to wrap. I don't want to leave mm -hmm. without Brian any giving you any closing. Oh no, no, this was great. I mean, it's just fun hanging out, chopping shop, and um, thanks for having me. And you know, like it, it was just I'm I'm a junkie about this stuff, so yeah. I was happy to be here. I show up at CES just to see you. I just oh you know, my god, it's always dope in Sony booth. It's always dope in Sony booth. Yeah, definitely always love to see you there. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob, what about you, my friend? Any? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because you haven't said anything yet. I, have not, all day, I haven't so. talked enough. Um, uh, I just want to uh, thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, I, we, I personally really relish this opportunity to interact more directly uh, with uh, consumers, with customers, uh, to be able to explain our technology, to listen to your 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 comments and, you, and answer your questions. So that, again, you ultimately can be informed and make an amazing purchase decision and, and be thrilled with with uh, with ultimately. Um, your television, your audio product. If you have an opportunity, do yourself a favor. Go into your favorite local brick and mortar place uh, that has these products on display. Give them a look, give them a listen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we appreciate all the, I'm sure you guys appreciate all the love and support for this kind of uh, platform. Um, and just keep a weather eye out because you never know we're going to pop up in the field somewhere. Yep. Right? We can hang out and, yeah. uh, it's and, true. and true. do this in person. Yep. And if they need your email, they can email me. Yes. Yeah. yes. For direct <laughs> questions it's, to Rob. It's, it's that it. guy. <laughs> that guy. That's probably. I'm sure they'll figure it out. They'll figure, Somebody's it. Email, <laughs> they'll figure sure. out who you're talking. <laughs> Take us home. Take us home. We're going home yeah, we're already. Going home. Nah, we got work. We to got do. work to do. <laughs> we got work to do. Um, but yeah, again, I want to thank everybody. I there are so many names that I see, and that Ronan just popped up. So a lot of names that I know: Ronan and Luca and Fomo and Brian and Kevin oh, and De Poets. And I'm trying to think of all the people that I've seen. Sweet Can. Um, I, there are so many of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I apologize for the many that I missed because there's there's a lot. Um, but what we are going to do as well, we're going to do our best to do this. Um, we're going to try to capture all of these questions mm -hmm. and we're going to go back in and revisit the comment section of this video after it posts because the live chat will disappear that for us to reply to. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in those questions as well as the answers to what we can answer. Yes. And you can also feel free if you have more questions, you can also still put those in the comments after it is done being live and we will do our best to answer those questions as well. Yep. So we're doing our best to support you as much as we can. Now, uh, there is a, uh, a link in the description. Make sure you check that out for the one-on-one -on -one consultation program. Don't worry, Brian, it's not live or anything. I was waiting for the tag. I was just waiting for the tagline. <laughs> Yeah. Get my last drink in. Yes. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Um, <laughs> for the one on one consultation program. Now, you may not want to do it right now because this information is still so new. And I know you have a ton of questions, but our, even our consultation people need to be prepared to give you the answers you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but as we get close to the launch time and you're not sure, like, ah, do I do I go Bravia 8? Do I go Bravia 9? Mm -hmm. I don't really know what to do. Uh, you please, go 9. You, you do, go. hopefully. But honestly, it's what's best for you. And in yeah, order Rob, for us to... We already talked about that. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. We had a moment. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but yeah, you can book a 30-minute consultation with someone to help answer the questions based on your needs, your expectations for your next purchase to help find the right one for you. Yeah. I like it. Um, 
That's it. Yeah, are we good? Are we and, good? And, Let's and check. The, Ooh, about 80, 80 thumbs up. Everyone is like, <laughs> there is well, a link in the description. For the yeah. Oh, yeah, because it says shipping and it was throwing me off. So shopping, yes. Thanks There's a link for shopping <laughs> in the description as well because I know a lot of people are super, super excited. Please click the, the, the like button as well, and we'd love to know how we can continue to connect with you better yep. as time goes on. Yep. So, yeah. You've been Derek with Sony? I've been Derek with Sony. I've been your boy Larry with Sony. And I'm Brian here just hanging out because you know what's coming home, right, baby? Cinema oh. coming home. Oh. <laughs> and who are you? Uh, cinema never tasted so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget... Rob. <laughs> That's fine. See you. Thank All you guys. Right. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate Take it. Take care. Yep. Be safe. Be well. See y'all. See ya.